This is my review of this 3D printed knitting machine from Thingiverse. I'll include the links in the description. Um, first of all, it's an excellent machine. Don't hesitate to download the files and build one yourself because it is it works as it should and it is is really great design but if you have a thousand people you're never going to have everything that everybody wants or the skills that different people have and I've always liked the slotted yarn carrier so I have a video showing how I modified this and um, also um, on the frame I changed that up there because I was changing the way the crank gear is um, the original was out a little ways and had this little indentation to allow the gear to fit in there and the crank arm and the crank gear were mounted on opposite sides of the frame and they have these couplers that go through and with a metal rod and you tighten down these set screws I never could get mine tight they kept slipping I'm not used to that hardware I don't know if I'm strong enough or just don't know what I'm doing but mine were, was always slipping. So I started looking at my Erlbacher metal machine and I also uh, remembered how I had put together that last 3D printed sock machine and I realized that the crank gear and the crank handle were joined and um, then they were mounted with uh, an axle bolt or whatever through the, the frame or whatever it's mounted to or the bed plate I think is what they call it so I um, after I tried this setup on my um, wooden frame I decided to go ahead and print the um, the whole frame out of plastic it's a really long print so I didn't want to print it and if this wasn't going to work. So what I did was I eliminated this area here that's open that juts out and, and I pushed this whole bottom area back so that I could mount the uh, crank gear on the outside. And um, I had did not think about washers and, and that kind of thing and I, I did put a washer between the crank gear and that's so I was afraid that the gears weren't going to mesh but they seem to be okay and um, I've got a 5 16th bolt going through there with a stop nut on the back side and um, I'm not even sure if it's going to show on the I don't want to jam my machine so I've got to turn in the right direction but I did put a little plastic spacer in between because there is a gap here and I just found some old screws that I had and I, I went ahead and screwed the two together so that they would stay and um, I'm going to try to figure out how to modify the fusion files to where I get this hex bolt um, recessed in there and also some way to join these two together um, I don't think they'll print well because when you lay this on the um, when you get ready to print this it prints with this flat on the uh, printer bed so I think it's best to print these two pieces separate and find a way to join them so I'm just gonna have to figure that out but right now this is working I mean I may never have to figure anything out but somebody else may want it already ready to to go ahead and just print as one so I haven't tested this on the new frame that I just printed so I want to load up some uh, yarn and um, cast on with some weights so I can see how well this setup is working it was working well on my wooden frame but I, I do want to test it on here All right, it's working. It is a little bit louder, but on the uh, wooden frame, I forgot to do it on this one, but on the wooden frame, I put a piece of uh, acetate between the, the wood and the uh, bottom of this, um, oh, what do you call it, this gear ring. 
and it did quieten it down a little bit. I just really thought that this plastic would, would not be so loud, but I guess the uh, plastic rubbing against each other is kind of loud. But when I finish testing this out, I may just go back and add some acetate to it. So my yarn is wobbling back there. So I like, I like this idea. I do want to figure out a way to um, rig this up or mount it permanently to uh, a piece of wood because it does seem like there's not enough to clamp to the table back here and uh, it's about the it's about the max my uh, 3D printer I could probably make it a little bit bigger on my 3D printer but most 3D printers probably wouldn't be able to handle this very much bigger so um, I guess that's the next thing that I need to work on but as far as the workings of the machine this is working well one thing though since you are using a stop nut on the back side. You don't want to um, tighten it too far down because you won't be able to turn this. So there may be some hardware out there that will work better, but I was trying to find something that would work with the uh, skate bearings that we already had in the plans for this uh, um, for this project. So this is in my opinion a great machine and again thank you to the designer for putting all the details in here and and getting us a machine that's affordable and by the way someone did mention um, the needles being expensive and they may be but they are um, made for these types of machines and I, I guess I could just pull one out I'll drop a stitch, but that's okay. But they're made to where when you pull the needles into hold or in the uh, non-working position when you're doing heels and toes, it holds in place because it's got all these little bends and turns in it. And also there's a place here when you want to put a needle back into the working position or what I call the upper working position and um, it's ready to knit the latches open and it just kind of has that little uh, dip in there that's going to help hold the needle the flatbed knitting machines uh, needles are a lot cheaper than these and that's what we used on the last sock machine that i made but they um, they have a, a what i call the butt of the needle and there's also a metal piece that comes down uh, and it's quite a bit longer and you have to cut every one of those needles and they're not designed for um, this vertical knitting on a flatbed knitting machine you're knitting horizontal like this and so the needles are specific to those machines although the flatbed knitting machine needles that I used on the sock machine did work well but um, you had to cut all those needles and they are quite a bit cheaper than these but when you consider if you buy even a vintage metal machine on um, eBay or any anywhere out there, it's going to be well over a thousand dollars, and you may or may not get a ribber and a ribber dial with it. With this one, um, you can print as many uh, cylinders as you want, um, as many ribber dial dials that you want, and not have to uh, spend all that money. So. Probably for less than, I'd say about $150, $150 uh, by the time you buy the hardware and all the needles, you could have, uh, and that doesn't include printing it, um, you could have this machine here. But on the others, you're, if you buy a whole setup for a brand new machine, it's going to be over $2,000. And um, depending on how many uh, cylinders you buy, and then the, I've seen the vintage ones go for quite a bit, too, on um, on the Internet. So anyway, if you want to save a little money and you can't justify spending a lot of money on one of the metal machines, this is definitely a machine that you want to make.